coming up on this week's BCL show. 16 teams learn their fate as they battle for the ultimate prize. We go in depth with JDA Dijon's playmaker, David Holston. And look back at the top 10 plays from the regular season. After 32 teams battled across 14 game days for a shot at glory, it's time for the BCL playoffs. Oh, baby! First, we travel to FIBA's headquarters in Switzerland for the round of 16 draw. The playoff teams were placed into pots based on their regular season finishes before being selected at random by European basketball legend Irelia Sikauskas and Hussein Bishak. The draw provided not only the round of 16 matchups, but also the potential quarterfinals, tantalizing fans with the potential clashes ahead. The new best of three format gives the home court advantage to the highest ranked teams. Meaning, even if an unseeded team win their round of 16 matchup, they'll still need to win at least one game on the road to advance to the final four. I think it's very good for Champions League and it's a step forward. The fact that it's best of three now and not anymore home and away, because you give, the, let's say, the reward to the team that has fighting for all year long to be first or second, that's a very good decision from the organization of Bichel. One tie that caught Bichel's eye was the battle between the two teams from his home nation of Turkey. Türk Telekom Beşiktaş, at least one team can reach top eight teams. I hope this final four in Turkey also, I hope all Telekom, all Bandırma, all Beşiktaş, I don't know, uh, we'll see. The standout fixture on the round of 16 slate is the all-Turkish derby. Pitting Group A winners Turk Telekom against Champions League mainstays Beşiktaş. And Akinar goes in and makes a beautiful shot. Got a shooter in the corner, they get it to him. Tries another one, the three is up. Three is good! A late regular season surge from Besiktas sees them enter the playoffs having won four of the last five games. Throws it down with two hands. They'll need to keep that form going to overcome a home court disadvantage. Got a little bit of time, he gets it to Gatra, who launches it. Good! Goodness me, are you kidding me? As a team on the rise, Turk Telecom will look to build on their impressive first season in the BCL behind a formidable starting lineup, led by frontcourt stars Kyle Wilcher and Mustafa Fall. Under the basket, Mustafa Fall in the lane, and he held the ball up like the Eiffel Tower. We've been together for five months now, and we got a solid team together, and I mean, I, we're growing and growing every day. Everything's just clicking, so we're, we're really confident in it. Uh, main quality, I would say shooting ability, because we have a lot of good shooters. We have Kyle who can really shoot the goal, TJ who can really shoot the goal. We're very unselfish and we have a lot of different weapons and I think that's what makes us dangerous. TJ, myself, uh, Mommy, you know, just having uh, some guards that can handle the ball and, you know, control the game would be huge for us. But I think it all goes back to defense. I mean, when we're locked in on, on defense one through five, there's not a lot of teams that can score on us. I think what I'm doing good is make the game easier for my teammates because like, I try to draw a lot of uh, intention with double team and I try to make the good, good pass every time and find open shot for my teammates. So I think this is my biggest quality on this team. You start this thing, you don't really know, but I mean, right now we're looking pretty good and uh, we're confident in what we can do. We have to take one stage at a time and one game at a time, but our, our definitely our goal is to win the whole thing. Our next tie matches the flair of France against the grid of Russia. And now they can push Holson. Numbers have we got an alley -oop. Oh, yeah, we do! Take off! You can see it coming. Dribbling up high, bounce pass, and in it goes to Stapkovic. Some hops. The base stats suggest a slight advantage for Dijon in the head to head. But where it gets interesting is in the three point shooting percentage stats. Dijon shot a blistering 39.3% from behind the arc over 14 games, the second best in the league. However, Nishni Novgorod held their opponents to just 32.1% shooting from free, more than 7 percentage points lower. A man who welcomed the challenge of Nishni's defense 
is JDA Dijon's David Holston, who spent his entire career proving it's not the size of the man in the fight that matters, it's the size of the fight in the man. Holston now, who else? Screen, uses it, pulls the trigger on another three. Oh, he is unconscious right now, David Holston. David Holston can take a huge, huge amount of credit for the win. He stepped up with play after play in the clutch. Throughout my career, I didn't been through so much, so many ups and downs. A lot of teams wasn't looking at me and a lot of teams didn't want to give me a chance. And I, and I was like down, really, really down on myself. You know, I had a lot of nights where I just, I wasn't sleeping, you know. After that, you know, I came back here and I was just working extremely hard because I didn't ever want to have that type of feeling again. You will see everything before before the player. You have a really quality on the, on the assist, on pick and roll situation. You have a really quality on the three-point shot. I think you make everything easier. When you set a good screen, he gonna find you for sure. And that's an easy bucket for you. I'm used to see David do uh, crazy things, so now I'm not impressed anymore because like it's happened a lot of times since we played together. So now when you do something crazy, I say, okay, it's, it's Dave. Holston just drains the three, and that's for sure. He hasn't lost anything. He ate losing. You feel that when the, when we play, he want, he wants to do everything to make the the right play. I always feel like I have to play with a certain type of chip on my shoulder, you know. It's just something that I will think I will always have in me, that type of chip where people look over me. I'm always thinking like people are underestimating me, so I have to be this rugged type of player to, you know, to show that I can play with the best of them. Holston explodes up the court, back to Ulmer, count it! All the kids that that's, you know, that's growing up and watching me, it really motivates me also, you know, because I always want to show them that, you know, hard work is everything. Two electric home crowds will make Hapoel Jerusalem versus Petty Steri Windmasters a fiery battle. Thomas Hall, baby! Recover by Morale, watch out! The underdog Greek side has a tough task ahead of them, needing to win at least one game in Jerusalem to advance. Baseline, and reverse layup for two, little spin off the glass. An offensive juggernaut during the season expects Hapoel Jerusalem to continue torching their opponents from all over the floor. James Valdi, you gotta love it. We have some players that, you know, any given day can score 20, 30 points. Um, dish out ten assists. Whatever the team needs to win that game, I think we understand as competitors um, what, it, what we need to do. Oh, Toda Raba to Sean Thomas lifts the crowd out. We work hard in practice, we come every day, we do our best, they, they teach us and, and they explain us what they want from us, and they, we come out there and we execute. They may have looked dominant, but according to Coach Katash, there were many challenges. It wasn't easy. I mean, Champions League uh, getting better. I think the, the quality of the teams, the experience of some of the teams, uh, they were learning a lot from last season. Also, we do the same thing. After qualifying on a dramatic final day, Burgos are ready for the next round. The juggler Vitor Benite and his teammates have learned their lesson and will be fearless as they prepare to face Dinamo Sassari. Are you kidding me? Vitor Benite is exceptional tonight. I mean, the ambition is always uh, playing the final four. Their fans have reasons to believe based on the stunning numbers from downtown. They made the most three-pointers in the BCL this season. Wants a step back, wants another three. No way, that is McFadden. Four three-pointer, four for four. In addition to realizing their offensive aims, Burgos must keep their composure on defense. He hands it off and a floating side, but rejected by Lima. 
That's because Dinamo Sassari has a force of nature in their squad, a man who's been impossible to slow down. Duchamp Pierre is knocking on the MVP door, averaging 13.7 points and 8.7 rebounds from the forward position. He really does do it all, Duchamp Pierre. Gets rejected! What a block by Duchamp Pierre! Pierre, oh! Cute little pass. Miro Bilan and Marcos Pisu contribute to making the Italians one of the most reliable teams in the competition, and as the current champions of the FIBA Europe Cup, they'll be a force to reckon with. This season provided Hoops fans with spectacular highlights. Here's our top 10. Sula, little crossover, little step back. Oh, wonderful handle by the big man, my goodness. Oh, wonderful pass and a wonderful finish! What a big, big play by Masulas. Foster now hands it off. Oh, what a rejection by Johnson. And misses the first, and they need to foul. They get it back for the three. Oh, it's good! The three is good! Marco Filippone! That's high! We're a crushing dunk! All over! Have all Jerusalem! Throw down off the alley for Cristal! He is starting to really have a positive impact for this team. And what a tough catch by Martin, and he puts it up! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness, he's made it! Was it Stone in the end? Oh, what a block! Three on two, four on two, and they pull it out. Over to Saunders, he puts it up, he had a lot of time left. Ah, oh, he hit the three! Can you believe it? Unbelievable! There will be no overtime! Back to Luke Luke. Oh my lord! I mean, he stares it down! You remember the name! It is Abdullah Luke! Still to come in part two, Ike's ageless assassin Keith Langford puts on a step back clinic. The race for MVP narrows down to 10. And Robin Bensing talks us through a night when he couldn't miss. Puts it up. Oh! It's Greece versus Germany in our next matchup as Ayk take on Telecom Baskets Bonn. Our noisy numbers for this game are 4 and 1. This will be Ayk's fourth appearance in the BCL playoffs in four seasons, and for Bonn, it's their first time making it to the postseason in three attempts. Lawrence got a step back. Eugene Lawrence, big time three. Oh, Eugene Lawrence, the boy from Brooklyn, New York. Ike will rely on all their veteran savvy, with current BCL champion Mario Chalmers and Ike icon Nico Zisis, as well as Keith Langford, who we caught up with for a clinic in the science of the step back. Step back for Langford is good! What a three! What a moment! I'm a left-handed player, obviously, right? And so a lot of times the object is to stop me from going left. With your weak hand, you're not as strong going to the basket. You're not as strong going to the basket when you finish, not as strong going to the basket and playing through contact. And so as you get older, you also lose a little bit of quickness, you lose a little bit of step, and so getting to the basket is not as easy as what it used to be. So, for the last few years, you know, I had to develop a shot, uh, something that I could always go to if the defense was really good and the defense was pushing me right. So typically, I had a ball up top, Already in my mind, I can see that the defense wants to push me right. And so as soon as I see the footwork, I'm already picking out my spot on the floor where I want to go and get the shot off. I want to get his body over there a little bit more to create more space for my step back on this side. So I'm playing with the ball, create, ah, let the defense come cut me off. As soon as he cuts me off, I'm quick. And the whole time I'm going right, I'm not even trying to get to the basket. But in his mind, 
he's lost some ground, he's lost some space, so he's trying to catch up. And at the moment he catches up to me, boom, I hop back, step back, shot. Langford dribbles between his legs, kind of fades back. Oh, he just has so much quality in his game. Some teams do a really good job of scouting. Some teams watch a lot of film, and they know that Langford wants to try to get to a step back. A lot of times, a team will think, make him go to the basket and make it difficult for him to finish at the basket over a taller defender. Here's the counter for that. I can see from his foot position that he wants me to go left. I can see it. I can feel it. So now, boom, I'm going left. I'm low, I'm attacking, and as soon as I feel him make contact, I snatch back immediately. So either I have a step back now, or if he's a really good defender, he comes and attacks, I keep the ball in a position where I can always escape dribble. So I come, I snatch back, now, and then I have the left again, and now either I have a layup, or I have a small jump shot, or it opens up the lane for passes and everything. You know, I always have in mind what I want to do, but after I attack with my initial move, there are always counters and everything that I work on. So I may have given you a little bit, but you know, the bag is a lot deeper than that. So don't worry. Let's write it down right now, folks. MVP candidate. ERA Nimberg entered the playoffs on fire, leading the entire BCL with 12 victories during the group stage. You know, we share the ball really well. We have great kind of joking relationships off the court and it translates to on the court. There's no egos whatsoever. It's all about sharing the ball and, and wanting to win. Almeida for the win, doesn't get it, but it's hit back, he's in. And now, and the first, they win the game. The secret to their success is an overwhelming defense. The Czechs don't take any possessions off, boasting a competition leading number in rebounds and defensive rating. Oh, what a block. They have blocks written all over it, all the way through the penetration. The youngest team in the round of 16 awaits them. And Terry with a big swat. Bandirma qualified despite early season struggles. A resilient team from top to bottom, their Turkish rising stars complemented MVP candidate Emmanuel Terry. Oh my goodness! In a squad that is always ready to amaze. Baseline throw down by Shen got off the feed. Every time they're counted out, Bandirma finds a new way to win. The race for MVP has never been more open. Here are the players to watch in the playoffs. Brown drives in, lays it up softly, and Ulusoy is called for the foul. Pulls the trigger on another three. Out onto block to 10. Rebound pulls up, knocks it down. Nimberg the lead again. Marcelino Huertas with that trademark layup. Langford again, got to put it up. Big three. Oh! Keith Langford. Drops another three. Nice ball movement here. And Pierre gets inside and finishes it the way. Shermadini. Oh, beautiful handoff. And Aaron White with the dunk. McFadden all the way. Goes inside. Ball's knocked away. Comes up with it in the lane to Shaw Thomas with the monster throwdown. Step back, fade away. Unbelievable shot by Carl Wiltshire. Group D winners Casa de Monzaragoza welcomed Lika Belas in a matchup that almost didn't happen. 
and the Lithuanian side qualified on the final day in dramatic fashion. A chance to tie it or win. Valinska steps to the inside, gets it back for the win. A foul. He's fouled on the three and Valinska will be at the line with a chance to win it. After making the first two, Valinska calmly stepped up one more time. This to possibly send Lekabalas through into the playoffs. Valinska steadies himself. And gets the roll, Valinska! Incredible scenes here. Lekabalas take victory. They drew a fierce clash against Zaragoza, who entered the playoffs riding a five-game winning streak, including a second big win over JDA Dijon that helped them take first place in Group D. Gets the pass, great fight. After Robin Bensing exploded for 32 points in that one, we sat down with the German international who walked us through how he did it. The first play was a design play for the four, for, for me in this position, um, to get a chance to go either in a low post or to go up to take a shot. And when you see my defender, he thought that I went to the low post, so he already went down to defend me in the low post, so I had time to go up to for the three-point shot and found, make a good screen for me. It was a little bit behind the three-point line, but this is um, I work on these shots, like to step a little back from the three-point line and make these shots. And it was pretty early in the game, so it was very good for me to start with a make three-pointer. Benzing caught the defense napping for a second three-pointer. And a few plays later, Paragotha went back to the well. We played the same system twice. Before I had one open three-pointer, I made it, and then the second one was the same. The foreman, my defender, was helping the roller, and the wing passed to me, and the, the defender thought I was going to shoot again, so he just really hustled out to, to close out the shot, so that was I had the time to make my fake and, and did the step-back three-pointer. Step-back three-pointers are an important part for me, and especially when you make some shots, the people come out crazy to you, and if you still want to get your shot up, you have to make a step-back to have position and that's what I did and it worked perfectly. Going into the half shooting 3 of 5 from distance, Benzing had the hot hand for Zaragoza. In the third quarter, Dijon kept giving Benzing space to shoot, so he continued to take advantage. Next three pointer was almost the same in like the whole game, uh, was a pick and roll with the 1 and the 5. My defender was helping inside again and had a wide open shot. I had a shot before, same rattled in out but went inside and the same like this. Then I was really hot and I said like, okay, to myself, right, right now I cannot miss anymore. Kicked it, extra pass, Benzing fakes, puts it up. Oh, six from eight from the three-point line. Then we come to one of my best three-pointers, I think, in this game was like end of the third quarter. We had that time before we drew a play. It was designed for me in this case. Now for Robin Neva. We play it a little bit different, but in the end I just get a, get the ball and just make one fake and just put the ball in the corner one step to the right and just shoot it and, well. Top three with Benzing, oh my word! In this moment of this game, I, was, I knew it was going to be in and that was a good feeling like, for me because I was, I was really feeling it. Credits to my teammates, you know, they always find me and I just have to shoot it. The German sharpshooter hit one more in the fourth to take his tally for the evening up to eight before coach Fizak mercifully pulled him from the game. If he can capture this magic again, Zaragoza will be the team to beat in the playoffs. The champions of the Intercontinental Cup and the kings of Belgian basketball will face off in the BCL playoffs. Providing fans with a massive clash inside the paint. Shamardini again with the rebound. He's just going to take it in and dunk it. The Canary Islands big man is not alone, though. He has MVP candidate Marcelino Huertas to make things happen. The Brazilian and Shermanator have a magical connection. And the Belgian champions will be hoping their teenage stars Amar Sila and Key Van de Vers rise to the challenge. Get the air one! Big time play! That's it for this week's show. The only question left to answer is who's going to make it to the quarterfinals.
baddest, the baddest. Anything they throw with me, I'm a ravage.